Hello, Vienna. How are you? Warm, I think. I hope you're good. I have 10 minutes, so I'm going to kick off very fast. Um, my story you can see here, Fury of the Founders. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I see, what I learned the last 25 years, and um, how we can maybe make better businesses, a better world, purpose-driven leadership, and what do we need for that, in my opinion. Okay? So I'm going to kick off very fast. Uh, more important, mostly, uh, who am I and why do I do what I do? I think that's really important. Um, the brochure text is always advertising. Uh, the real story is I had a rough upbringing, a tough ch childhood. You seem to develop empathy, is what they say. Uh, I was kicked out of professional football, soccer, and expelled from university already. So at 24, I was basically a misfit, ground zero. Uh, I fell in love with the internet. I founded the Interactive Advertising Bureau in uh, the Netherlands in 1996. So you can see, white male, 50 plus, yeah, that's me. Um, uh, I sold five businesses, uh, three to WPP, one to Microsoft, and I invested 90% of that money into 24 social startups, people, planet, prosperity companies. An investor would say, what is my ROI? I say, for example, that your children still have an ocean to swim in. That is difficult for impact investors, but yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We always need our ROI, eh? What is the return on investment? You and your companies like me, we need to make 25 business cases, and then we don't do it because we rather put our money into media. It's a little bit of the culture that I've seen around me. And I think, Austria, you will recognize a little bit. Um, very important. I was, uh, and I hope for most of you, if you can return to your inner child, I'm still that four-year-old kid. Why, 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 why? And I believed in space. I saw a television series when I was four years old, The Six Million Dollar Man. It was a space series. And when I grew up later in life, I, I thought, I'm still a space kid. I'm fascinated by science and sci-fi and technology and how we can apply that to make a better world. So, but it's difficult because if you're a futurist or a speaker like me, I've heard for 25 years, he's crazy, he's out of this world. It's, so it's very difficult if you have a future vision, they think you're a sort of idiot. And uh, you have to be very patient sometimes. Uh, and I'm not so patient. I think that you can see that. But luckily, Ty turned, eh, karma has no deadline, it might take a long time. Now, we're flying back to back with NASA. Eh? And Elon Musk, it's a little bit crazy, we all say, he now lands the rockets back on the back of a paper cup. So who's going to tell me that space and sci-fi is a crazy story? I think it's all about uh, imagination. Um, what I did, and it's very important, we tweaked and tuned a little bit with the satellites in the sky to protect the land, the seas, the ocean. We um, check coral reefs, overfishing, deforestation, turtle populations. And if you have the data, I sometimes say, uh, we have the data, politicians sometimes don't tell the truth. So sometimes it say, hey, deforestation is happening. We have the birds in the sky. So I'm a little bit freaky and a little bit technology driven, but more to make sure that we can um, make the world a better place. And we as businesses can play, of course, an incredible important role in that, eh? our social corporate responsibility. I'm not talking about Hollywood purpose bullshit marketing and greenwashing. I mean that you do it from the heart and the soul and for real. So uh, I want to give you a few examples where I see technology going and where I see the role of us you in the audience, we, the business leaders of the future. Technology to do good, social innovation. Uh, I admire uh, Novak Djokovic a lot, not for his qualities, of course, Serena Williams, but they are people with a heart and a soul. They give back to humanity and society. Serena Williams, for example, already backs 60 social startups. So that is, I think we can make a big difference. And cause artists and athletes, if they mobilize two, three billion fans, all a little bit to do good, NFT to do good, if Cristiano Ronaldo would say, with 500 million fans, we're going to help, we don't need, even need politics anymore. So I, I have a different view on how we can speed up as 
uh, artists and entrepreneurs. Boyan Slat, of course, eh, cleaning the oceans, making it plastic free, uh, crowdfunded, he's doing it, and he say, if you stop throwing plastic into the oceans, we can have it plastic free by 2040. My entrepreneurial brain says, hey, that's cool. Can you imagine if we find nine more Boyans and if we fund nine more Boyans, our oceans can be plastic free in 10 years time. Sounds very pragmatic, but it's possible. And why? I saw a quote from Keanu Reeves from The Matrix. The real world is almost ahead of our science fiction. So I think that exponential technologies, eh, they gave us clues, exponential, we can do it 10 times faster. So I hope that you all uh, can find the curiosity and imagination, be a little bit of that Walt Disney kid again, eh, where you can dream and where your parents say, no, find a good job, take no risks, and society says, stop dreaming, Shh. keep dreaming, and dream big, okay? That helps. Uh, and I say, it's never too late uh, to be who you might have been. I turned back to my inner child, and I immediately found a new balance in my working life. Purpose, passion, paycheck. And that was a very nice mix, also a way to know how I want to shape my future. And I think that's for everybody important. Well, the biggest thing, I want to touch it very shortly, uh, I see a fourth industrial revolution. I started talking about it 20 years ago. Uh, it will change everything. Disruptive technologies, exponential technologies, it's shaking up business, humanity, economy, and society as we know it. 10 times faster than we all can imagine. So what does it do for us? Exponential, you can see it here, gradually, gradually, boom, suddenly. And we're all surprised. And how is that possible and why does it keep happening? Exponential technologies versus our linear minds. If you come from the world of television, you're a linear mind. Sex in the city, Tuesday night, 8.30. This is how we're programmed. Well, the world changed a little bit. So how can we boost our mindset? Technology can do it all, but it's about culture, mindset, DNA. Um, who knows this series, The Mad Men, an old TV series you and marketing advertising should know, look it up. It's a series about advertising, traditional Mad Men, advertising, advertising, advertising. And if you had deep pockets like Coca-Cola or Nike, you became the number one in the market. We've been doing that for 70 years, but we do tend to forget three TV networks and three products in the supermarket. The world changed a little bit. And then I discovered them. Please don't go to Netflix. I made this up. The math man, they don't exist. This is my metaphor for the new companies. Larry, Mark, and the rest of the San Francisco gang. They don't advertise, they innovate, and they take over entire industries in under 10 years' time. So what do they do and what do they see? Outliers, Richard Branson and other people that say, it was never like this before, it should have been like this already, let's do it. And what do we do? Very fast. We're still retelling like it's 99. Is that handy? The madman, the four stripe generals that say to young people, Shh, you're a junior, I'm a senior, relax. Okay. They said for 10 years, Netflix is a hype. I've spoken in Cannes and for every media company in the world. YouTube, Igor, it's a bunch of stupid cat videos. Yeah, okay. Mindset. The whole car industry laughed at Tesla. It's a hype, Igor, don't even talk about it. Who's laughing now? Mindset. And what I see, I hope that we can create a world where we can program the robots to do our routine, repetitive and stupid work, heavy work, so that we the people can do mindful jobs. We can control the robots. I hope they're gonna, not going to control us. We need a culture of inclusion, diversity, and we need much broader and better people. People that have connection to society. Who views an Instagram? Be honest, please. Everybody? Okay. Who of you follows Kim? Kim Kardashian, I understand. We can also make a difference, ladies and gentlemen, because Malala, the Pakistani girl that said to the Taliban, hey, 
women have the right for education, I'm smart and going to school. She got shot in the head, she survived, and she won a Nobel Prize. Guess how many Instagram followers she has? Today, 2.3 million. So I hope that you and everybody else will support Malala too, eh? so that we give women true empowerment. And not, can I say it? How, how can we get rid of the Kardashians? Stop making stupid people famous, or let's help other people. Yes? Okay. Um, because we can point at everybody, but we can also make a big difference ourselves, and I hope you start with today. And I want to say, find your true north purpose, passion, paycheck. Thank you very much, and enjoy your day. Thank you.